in the team. So it's an unchanged 11 for Pakistan. Play about to begin. Our first commentators, Ramiz Raja, and with him, Atrali Khan. Well, Yasir Ramid, there's seven matches for him. 203 runs, 100 in the last game. And the strike rate, I'm sure, will get better as he starts opening more and more for Pakistan. And that's Mohamed Afiz uh, that we told you about. Has the good touch and very stylish right-handed opening batsman. 14 matches for him and an average of 23.5 and uh, a strike rate of 53. So Mohamed Afiz will perhaps feel that he needs a big one. He's got good starts but just hasn't got the big one for his team. There is Hasibul Hussain, first match for him in this series. He'll be starting proceedings here. Hasibul Hussain, brought in hey. for the one days, has been given the new ball from the golf course end. It is not an auspicious start. The wide ball, the first ball ball, so we uh, still do not have a legal delivery ball. Pakistan won the toss and uh, in Zamamulak straight away elected to bat on uh, what appears to be a flat track. And Zamam seems to do, be doing well as a captain, Atha, because he remembered the names of his uh, team players this time. He forgot them last time when I interviewed him. Another wide one. This is not what the Bangladesh has wanted, not what uh, Khalid Mahmood wanted. They must have had a long chat after that uh, pretty ordinary effort in the last one there. Pakistan put up their highest score against Bangladesh in uh, that Multan one there. Another wide one, but this time Malin Dar doesn't make a, a decision. But I thought Bangladesh need to get off to a good solid start here, as was uh, as was described by Khalid Mahmood uh, in his interview. Alim Dar is uh, out there in company with Russell Tiffin. Yeah, they need to start good, they, but uh, not by bowling wides would be a right idea. I think uh, the line has to be more disciplined on a flat track like this. There is a little bit of movement of the seam. Uh, the first three deliveries, even though the first two ones were wide ones, but I could sense that there was some lateral movement. So that might be a good idea if uh, Hasibul Hussain can just bring uh, the deliveries much closer to the bats and make them play because he's got a two slips, uh, just the two slips in the catching position and he needs to make sure that he bowls on the off-term line. That's a nice crisp shot to get off the mark. It's a lovely shot through mid-wicket. Mohamed Hafiz uh, in touch straight away with that lovely shot through, through uh, the onside. Packs enough to a flying start. Two wide and a half volley on his legs. And what a beautiful shot. Right on, on his toes. Hit it very nicely. Did not hit it, try to hit it very hard. It was the timing. And I think the outfield is lightning fast. Raced over to the boundary. Just uh, roll of the wrist and away it went. <laughs> well, it's a massive uh, crowd here in uh, Faisalabad. Conditions are uneasy because it is hot, the sun is out. The air is still, but uh, they're still out there in the shades. They must be enjoying this because uh, after that in Zamam innings, the interest seemed to have uh, increased a great deal in the series. Well, Ramiz on a flat track like this, uh, which is uh, very good for batting conditions, the discipline in bowling needs to be... Uh, really really good 
they need to bowl on the stump, stump to stump basis. Any width of or any ball pitched uh, up to the batsman will be driven. Anything short will be cut. So they need to show a lot more discipline than what uh, we saw in the first one days. Pakistan six without a wicket. That's gone through square leg. No need to run for that one. There's a chase, but uh, in vain. Wrong line from Mashafe Murtaza and Yasser Hamid will not let the, those go by easily. Well, Yasser Hamid, as we've seen earlier, that's very strong on the leg side. Anything pitched on the other middle stump, that was short as well. The length was not right. Picked up very nicely, and uh, the outfield is really fast. So anything you put in the middle of the bat is going to go over to the boundary until it goes straight to the fielder. He's found the gap and he's uh, found it to precision. Yasser Hamid would have enjoyed that. Minimum of effort with good result. Too much width on that occasion from Hasibul Sen. Yasser Hamid played that beautifully. Picked the gap right in the middle of point and gully and kept the bell ball down. That's a good shot. Hasibul once again a little wide and uh, Yasser Hamid has uh, now got two fours. Once again that range, this is nicely stopped. Fielding uh, has got to be committed out there to support bowling on this flat track. 19 without a wicket. First ODI, 35 fours and six sixes hit by Pakistan. It was uh, an innings uh, that uh, buried Bangladesh out of the game. Pakistan got 64 from the last four overs in Multan. That's uh, dropped. A setup missed. That could very well turn out to be a costly miss. Alok Kapali, who uh, saved uh, a certain four in the last over, missing a straightforward chance. Well, that's where Bangladesh goes wrong. They put him a brilliant uh, effort in the field and look at that. Should have just scuffed it down. It's a sitter, as you mentioned. That just might be a little bit too costly because the batsman who offered that chance is none other than Yasser Hamid, who has been in terrific form. A little bit more cautious this time, Yasser Hamid. Laps in concentration, that could be one reason for that shot. He's been middling everything, he's been in good form, but careless shots can um, easily make you throw away your good form. This was a careless shot. Alok Kapali was on the move, didn't balance himself properly, and the ball was put down. Well, the point you were making that if you don't pick up the singles, uh, then it just gets to get big on your head, and maybe that was the reason why Yasser uh, tried uh, to play that shot on the up, ended the over. Could have been a very good one for Bangladesh. Pakistan 21 for none. And that's where he has to transfer his experience. He's got to sit down with Yasser Ramid and has to tell him, look, don't have to be imp impetuous. Just try and play yourself in for a little while and then back yourself up in order to play your strokes. I'm sure Javed will do that. He's a very good coach. Quite start by these Pakistani openers. Almost seven overs, they're going to be completed. They've only picked up 23 runs. It's not that the Pakistani batsmen, they are playing badly. But it's the Bangladeshi bowlers, they're maintaining a very tight line and length. Learn their lesson from the first game. playing his comeback game that's beautifully struck half stopped at extra cover by Habibul Bashar three of the over Pakistan after seven overs 24 without loss this will go to the boundary line that's a beautiful stroke second boundary for Mohammed Hafiz 
just carrying on to the boundary rope. And that's where Mohammed Afiz is so good. Not a great flourish of the bat. Just time the ball enough to send the ball towards the boundary. Not a great follow through on that occasion. But the timing was superb. Well, this short show how good the pitch is. Simple timing. The length was up. He just placed it between the two fielders. And so far he hit two boundaries in his 12 runs. And uh, Murtaza has to be a little bit more shorter. A little bit. Well, he was. And he's been punished. Well, that was outside the off stump. The ball the batsman waiting for. The Pakistani love to play the cut shot. Drive. And they are really found to play outside the off stump. This one again short, but a lot of room for Hafiz to play that beautiful square cut. And it was hit so hard that the batsman, the fielder, did try it, but no chance for the fielder. Well, it was the room which Mohammed Hafiz enjoyed. Third boundary for him. Well, it's a very difficult proposition for the bowlers to bowl in one-day international, especially on uh, pitches where the ball comes onto the bat very nicely, although the white ball always swings and seams. But still, they find it very difficult because uh, the fielding restrictions they're on within the 15 overs, they're not allowed to have more than two fieldsmen on the boundary line. And if you don't, if you're not allowed to have quite a few fieldsmen at the boundary line, you've got to be very precise with your line and length. They have strengthened the offside field. They have taken off the slip. And they have placed a short mid-wicket, the second catcher. <laughs> Flying towards third man. Nine of the over. Pakistan, 33 without loss. Fish. but safe fourth boundary for Hafiz he's breaking loose well this time it was short as we have already discussed the pitch which is slow you can't afford to bowl short on this track and uh, when Hafiz is would love to play that full shot it was a very interesting looking full shot at the last moment he placed it there as there is only two fielder behind the circle, so it's plenty of room for this kind of shots. So another four for Hafiz. Look at that again. Once again, Apesh. Is he dropped? Rajan Sali is one of the best fielder in the uh, Bangladesh side. As I said earlier, they are playing too many shots. They have to control themselves. Well, I think uh, that's where uh, the captain of the Bangladeshi team really has to react. Most of the fieldsmen, they are coming from the edge of the circle. And had that fieldsman just up one or two paces, would have been an easy catch. But still, at this level, you've got to pick up these catches. That was easy. Another let off. Both the Pakistani openers, they've been dropped, given a life. Good over. Four of the over, Pakistan, 37 without loss. Got him. Needless stroke from Yasser Hamid. And he had to pay the price. Mushfiqur Rahman has struck for Bangladesh's important wicket. Well, there is nothing for the fast bowlers in this track. And if the batsmen can stay there, they can have a lot of fun batting. But uh, I think it's overconfidence. Yasir Hamid going for it, using his feet, missing the line of the ball, straight ball, and his bowl. Pakistan losing their first wicket. Yasir Hamid has scored 100, is out for 15, and Pakistan is 45 for 1. Yusuf Yohana, the next man in, has an excellent average in One Day International. And the most important thing, the strike rate, is beyond 70. 
and that is the reason why he has arrived at the crease. Impetuosity has taken the best of Yasser Amid without taking any measures of the bowling of Mushafur Kurman. He went after it, and the bowler has struck, knocking off the leg stump. And that was the breakthrough these Bangladeshis they were looking for. Huge shout straight away. It was the case of pad hitting the ball hitting the pad first and then the bat. Needless run has been given to the Pakistani team and Yusuf Johanna is off the mark. Well, this is the best the bowlers can do on this kind of tracks, which they're going to face throughout the Pakistan series, and that's good stop by Rajan, but uh, the batsman was there, but sloppy feeling by the Bangladeshi. They are giving uh, too many singles like this. Some uh, all extras like this will build up in the end. So they have to show some discipline in the field. Once, sure. again, sure. once again, for the batsman, there is no final leg. They're going to have the stationary fielder at short final leg, and uh, the bowler has to bowl to a very tight line. It's Nick has picked up second wicket in this over. What an over this has been. Once again, too many shots outside the off term. That ball had a little lift, got a little bit of lift from the pitch. Might be because he's bowling his first over. And uh, we can see when uh, Rahman bowled outside the off term, a little bit of lift, got a nick straight to the keeper. And Pakistan lost his second wicket. Must be very excited to get wickets on this track. And Mohammad Afiz is out after scoring 26. And Pakistan lost the second wicket for 46. Well, the most uh, prolific batsman in the Pakistan's history of under internationals, Inzamam ul Haq, and he's the captain. Got a job to do because they have lost two wickets in quick su succession. Nice and straight. And the Inzamam power behind it. This is good batsmanship. A very fine shot from Yusuf Yuana. Very strong on the onside. Picking that gap between mid on and mid wicket very nicely for two runs. Wearing a handkerchief around his neck, Yusuf Shwana. I can tell you it's very warm outside there. It's not easy for the bowlers also. Actually, it's uh, caught us by surprise, the warmth and the humidity here. Because when we came uh, out last night in Faisalabad, it seemed pretty pleasant. And we thought it's going to be an improvement over Multan and uh, Peshawar. But it's turned out to be hotter than in Multan. So as a result, you can see the cricketers wearing those uh, cold collars around their neck. Nicely played. Running the first one hard, looking for the second. Good cricket from Johanna. In Zamam uh, must be feeling very confident uh, after that win at Multan as a captain. And uh, his innings also at Multan, followed by one of the gems in the test matches. Well, he completed 9,000 runs in the last match when he got to 43. Strike rate of 71.8. And that's how he strikes the ball. It didn't come out the middle of the bat. It wasn't short enough. So he had to quickly get into position, but nobody in the deep, so very safe shot to get a couple of runs and bring up the end of the over. Pakistan 67 for two. Well, that was the opportunity. A bad delivery. He was looking for a Yorker, turning out to be a full toss. Easy pickings for Yusuf Johanna. First boundary in 10 overs. 
watch the toe on that occasion. It was opened up and dip of the shoulder enabled Yusuf Johanna to execute that stroke perfectly. Oh, nicely played. He knew that slip was not there. He knew that third one was there. Played it so fine and so late. That is a class shot by Yusuf Johanna. Could have gone wrong. Was not really far away from the keeper. But he had a lot of bad on it, made sure that he was away from the keeper. Depth touch, waited, and then opening the face of the bat in the last moment. And the Mamul Hart taking the aerial route. That was a good stroke from Yusuf Johanna. Brings up the 100 for the Pakistani team. And in the process, they have lost only two wickets. Straight away attacking on the on the best bowler in the Bangladeshi lineup, getting a boundary, the fifth one in three overs. That's a huge shot. Just picked the length right and hit it on top of the mid wicket for four runs. Well, he's cutting loose in Zamam. Pakistan have got plenty of wickets in hand, but the. Uh, Bowling has been tight. It's nicely carved away. This is an excellent shot from Inzamama. Like he's not running hard because he knows that he's found the gap. This partnership 87 and gone. Inzamama will hack a rush of blood. Pakistan were looking uh, to charge the opposition, and uh, just at this point, Inzamama is gone. Now, this is a crucial breakthrough. This could very well be make or break situation. Certainly is uh, for Pakistan. It's Mam going down the track and trying to hit him out of the stadium. Went down the track and missing the line completely. And middle stump gone. That is a very, very big blow for uh, Pakistan. And I'm sure the Bangladeshis are delighted to see Inzimam going back to the field in 41. Pakistan 133 for three. He's an important player, Yunus Khan, for Pakistan. 88 matches. He's the experienced man. That's played fine. Now, Yunus, in fact, it's uh, Johanna who has placed the ball magnificently. Also raises his 50. is the shout and it's taken a loose shot from Yunus Khan and another Pakistan wicket falls which means more pressure on the uh, coming batsman Yunus Khan would be disappointed with this one a lazy shot in the end not being able to control it along the ground yeah loose stroke uh, from uh, Yunus Khan playing straight into that uh, fielder was standing uh, for that particular shot so must be very disappointed Yunus Khan going back very dejected and very rightly so i think he's missed out on a very good batting track Yunus going back on eight pakistan 158 for four shweb malik is a good all-round cricketer his first outing as a batsman in uh, the wonders well that's a nice cut shot shweb malik has been in terrific form of late a little bit of width from the left armor and how will he uh, play that one very very quickly into positions we have malik slightly short of length and what a beautiful stroke from this young man very fine all-rounder he's got a lot of runs under his belt sweep shot and it's been taken very nicely I'm afraid Shoaib Malik has to walk back to the pavilion. That's a very important wicket for the Bangladeshis. The fifth one. Bangladesh right back into the game now. Picking up Shoaib Malik. Fifth one. Pakistan losing their fifth wicket. Score of 162. Rather 168. This time Rajan Saleh pitching it up and trying to sweep straight to the square leg fielder. Alok Kapali. 
did not have trouble at this time to pick that one up. Shoaib Malik back in the pavilion. Pakistan in a little bit of trouble at 168 for five. Will keep everybody interested. Can be a close game, but if you have a look at the Pakistani bowling lineup, plenty of depth. And with the pitch, which is not offering a consistent pace to the batsman to use. And he's gone. Wicket number six, Abdul Razak has nicked one to the wicketkeeper's hand. And that's a big blow. What a breakthrough for Bangladesh. Mohamed Rafiq, the most successful bowler in the Test Series, has picked another one here. And what an important wicket this has been. Got a little bit of turn of the wicket and a smart catch by Khalid Mashud. So, Abdul Razak is on his way back to the pavilion, just scoring just four runs. Pakistan now is struggling at 177 for six. Well, Kamran Akmal, he's arrived at the crease. He has a lot of promise with the bat in his hands. Put the Pakistani batsman under pressure. Another shout. Well, there was no result in the favour of the Bangladeshi bowler. Clearly drifting towards the leg stump. End of a successful over from Mohammad Rafiq, picking up Abdul Razak and the Pakistani team, 179 for six. It is one day cricket. Rajan Saleh picking up two and Mohammad Rafiq picking up two wickets as well. So they are aware of the fact that these two bowlers operating at the moment can pick wickets. Well, the most productive time for the Pakistani batsman was from the 20th till the 30th over. Huge shout, huge shout. There was a lot of noise when Yusuf Yohana was attempting that stroke. Well, uh, it'll be interesting watching this replay. Straightish delivery. Oh, huge deviation. Yusuf Yohana is very lucky. So is the Pakistani team. Picks up a single. And should have been back in the pavilion. That is a huge neck. Russell Tiffin, once again, not picking that up. I thought he was walking, Amir. And the moment you looked at it, that is a huge neck. Very unlucky. Well, is that the lucky break the Pakistani team needed in this one-day game? Didn't have a great series, Russell Tiffin. He is from Zimbabwe. Well, it's all happening in the ground. The Bangladeshi bowlers, especially the spinners, they are dominating. Look at that one. Huge deviation. Once again, Kamran Akmal backing up. Too far out. Russell Tiffin making a decision. The experience of uh, Bangladesh gone. The Javed Umar was there. Annan Saka was there. They played so well in the test matches. And I'm sure they're going to miss them. That's a beautiful stroke from Rajan Saleh. But Abdul Razak has brought the Pakistani team back in this game. With some quality bowling picked up two wickets in a span of nine deliveries without conceding a run he's one utility cricketer that you can have as a captain in your team can chip in with the ball as well as the bat slow delivery nicely played to pick up a single 21 overs gone Bangladesh 93 for three 11 fours in a total of 96. So it's been attractive cricket from the visitors. 89 dot deliveries. It 
Bangladesh can keep on taking uh, the singles and twos that are available, I think they can still put pressure on the opposition. These runs do not uh, look a great deal. They do not look menacing enough for the opposition. But in the end, it uh, keeps on uh, totaling up. Keeps the uh, strike turning over. Just like that. Safe cricket. I think uh, this is where Bangladesh need to be careful here. They've lost three wickets. Need to play safe cricket for a while. Just look to pick up those uh, singles and twos. Not look for uh, heroics. Not look for uh, big boundaries. And stay within reach. 5.3 runs per over. Still achievable, provided they have wickets in hand. And provided Rajan Saleh plays uh, an intelligent innings. That's nicely played by Alok Kapali. Played with a much straighter bat. That's the reason he got the gap. With the extra cover to pick up two comfortable runs. So that's uh, Bangladesh 100 for three. Brings up the 100 with the two runs in the cover region. That's a lovely drive from Alok Kapali. Just goes on to show that this track is still good for batting. On the rise. And the ball flew away very quickly off the mat. Nice shot. Good early call from Rajan Saleh. He's a good judger of a run. Not only does he run well between the wicket, but uh, whenever there's an opportunity, he would call early. And that is a secret. And a positive call. Yes or no. At times, batsmen uh, do have... Uh, Various methods of calling, wait, 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 can be confusing. It can be interpreted, interpreted wrongly. Yes or no can help. That means I feel that as long as the run rate does not go over 6 or 6.5, it's still reachable by the Bangladeshi batsmen, even though they've lost uh, two very quick wickets. The last wicket was a Tushar Imran, again disappointing with the bat. But uh, they should look forward from here. Alok Kapali and Rajan Saleh. That's well played. End of the over. Bangladesh, 100 for three. His line generally in Multan was pretty good. He gets the ball right up. As a newcomer, you've got to simplify so many things. The arena is big, the pressure is there. Massive crowd here in Faslabad, as was in Multan. You can easily be overawed by the situation. So you need to simplify your thinking. Keep the ball nice and up. That's much better on target. I think that is uh, what will be required from Junezia at this stage. Well, Junaid Zia only in his uh, second one there. Just bowled two deliveries. I think the, the point that you were making, Ramiz, is like the line and length. He needs to bowl a stump to stump. That's what, what it matters in one-day cricket. And if he can pick the line up and just settle down to a nice rhythm, it'll be interesting to see how he comes out of it. Rajan Saleh will run hard as he always does. These little things uh, do point out to uh, making him uh, a wonderful player. Running between the wicket, his approach. He hasn't thrown away his wicket yet. He's tried his level best out there. Ah, way swinger. Good delivery. He's got to keep the ball just about there. Good stuff. Just away movement of the wicket. Must have pitched on the seam. And just cut away nicely. Well, Inzamama has been uh, pretty confident of Junet Zia. He's given him uh, five fielders inside the circle. 
He's got the liberty to put one back, but he's not done that. He's got the mid-off and mid-on up in the circle. Alok Kapali will be looking to hit. This time around, a little bit of width. Straight to the point feeler. Just pick up a comfortable singer. No, no boundary now for eight overs. Pakistan have uh, restricted the boundaries. Rajan Sal is still out there and uh, he'll be the key player. A little bit of width and uh, he, uh, well, I was thinking he got away with it, but Russell Tiffin, late gesture from him of a wide ball. Fair one. Just a little bit too wide. So the field placement that was I was talking about to you, Ramiz, is that he's got uh, mid-off and mid-on inside the circle. So he has the chance to hit over the top. But he has to make sure that the ball is pitched up and you get a nice free of arms. Four off the over. 110 for three. out lovely shot drive through the offside first boundary in 10 overs and it was a lovely drive by a low Kapali in the slot for the swing to come down heavily well, does he play that shot really well I mean, he played a similar, similar kind of shot which fetched him two runs, but this time around, what a shot. Full face of the blad and the elbow of right. That is an excellent shot. Youngster watching this back home could definitely learn a few tricks from him, Alok Kapali. Good balance. Instantly, after being hit for a boundary, Inzamam has walked to the bowlers, and that's a good sign. Yes, uh, Inzamam must not tax him with attacking fieldsmen or uh, fielders uh, in the circle at mid-off and mid-on. Still is a very, very good batting track. They're halfway through the target. More fielders now on the offside. Fielder taken from on and uh, put at uh, cover. Mid-off has uh, come straight. Slow one, uh, once again, lovely timing. And once again, a boundary. The ball runs away from Omar Gul, so this is an expensive over. In fact, end of the over, 126 for three. So it's important for Bangladesh that Rajan Saleh stays there and plays till the end, and the other players play around him. That is how it is uh, generally in one-day cricket. One batsman going through. Well, that's shipped in the air. Will that be taken? Well, uh, taken, and that's an important catch. Rajan Saleh would be extremely disappointed with this shot. Chipping the ball in the air, he knew that the fielder was placed there. Had he gone through with the shot, he would have found the boundary. But for some unknown reason, reasons, he checked his shot. And now Pakistan have got this important breakthrough. Yeah, he did not get the full free, free flow of the arms he could get, but uh, that was a no shot. Commentator's curse, as I would describe it. Rajan Saleh goes out for 64. Bangladesh, 128 for four. Mashrahe Murtaza has been promoted up the order. Bangladesh have lost uh, Rajan Saleh, important wicket. Ah. Mashrahe Murtaza is off the mark, into action straight away. And that's what slow turn does. It gets you to miscue the lofted shots. Safe as a house on that occasion, Yohana. So the pinch hitter, Murtaza, fails to deliver. Yeah, that's why he was sent in, Murtaza, ahead of a good established uh, batsman to just increase the run net, and there he went after Shreya Malik. 
There was some spin on the ball. The ball came slightly slower than he had expected. Tried to play over Midon. The ball took the top edge of the bat, going towards the deep square like Yusuf Johanna took a very well judged catch. So another big blow for Bangladesh. Both are going back with one. Bangladesh said 133 for five. Well, here's another unexpected promotion. Mushfiqur Rahman, who batted a number nine in the last match, comes at the fall of the fifth wicket. So this is the scorecard. Only one player, Saleh, who's uh, played with uh, some confidence and some quality cricket shown by Saleh. And Omagul back into attack. is very close and he's gone. I think it's not a bad decision. The batter is very disappointed. Gives a long look back at the umpire. He continues to look at the stumps as we watch the Pakistanis celebrate. Umar Gul has this early angle, but I think the impact was about off the middle. That would have gone on to hit the stumps. Here's another look. Not very wide off the crease. Where is that heading? I had a great chance of that. Just crashing onto middle and leg. I think that's a good decision. Mushfiqur Rahman gone for a duck. Bangladesh 133 for six. On the green line is the initial required rate, which is 4.9. And the yellow line, or the yellow the worm that you see there, is the current run rate, which has dipped below the required rate. Edged and gone. Nod of the head, and the finger goes up. Shoaib Malik continues to trouble the Bangladeshi batsman. It's time for Khalid Mahmood, the captain, to take a walk. Oh, it looks all over for the Bangladesh team now. The skipper losing his wicket to Shoaib Malik. He's trying to play that streaky stroke through that slip area. Got a tickle, and Kamran Akmal took a very good catch. And here is the finger of Aleem Dar. So Khalid Mahmood walking back, got out on four Bangladesh, 138 for seven. Jinsale <laughs> by far the top scorer of the Bangladesh, 64 of 93. And then 225s from Bashar and Kapali who's still out there. Athar Ali Khan and Ramiz Raja will take over commentary. Thank you, Sanjay. Bangladesh, uh, once again, disappointing uh, the crowd here. They were off to a promising start. But it's uh, just that Pakistani bowlers came back very strongly through uh, Umar Gul and uh, Abdul Razak and how well Shweb Malik has bowled. 3 for 23. Runs on the onside. Hello, Kapali has just faced 10 balls in the last 5.1 overs. So he's been off strike. And uh, that uh, has not gone down too well with uh, Bangladesh. They're chasing a target and they want Alok Kapali to be on strike. Thinking for a quick single and getting it at the end. But it has been a pretty disappointing performance from Bangladesh. Quite a few soft dismissal. Especially from uh, Rajan Saleh, was well set, looking very good. And the batting order that uh, Dave Watmore chose to play in this uh, one day did not come off. So it's uh, Khalid Mashud to the rescue. Six point six runs per over. That will be difficult. Rajan Saleh looked very matured out there, but the rest of the batsmen have not fallen the example set out by the youngster. And 
they've been amateurish with their shot selection. They panic, and the rhythm uh, was jolted when Rajan Saleh was out. Benzamam should be uh, enjoying himself out there. A victory in the first uh, one day at Multan. And he's sensing win again here. Well, I think Rajan Saleh did play his part, but uh, Habibul Basha was up to the mark as well. They put on 82 for the second wicket. And uh, the decision that went against uh, Habibul Basha might have been the turning point because he was set, well set. He was in a rich vein of forms. But uh, umpires have different ideas. Nevertheless, it's back to the present situation where Bangladesh is struggling to get to that park. That's a nice shot. Played very late, straight to mid on, just would fetch him a single. End of the over. Bangladesh, 142 for seven. Second wicket between Saleh and Basha getting Bangladesh 82. And Saleh was involved um, in a fourth wicket. Good effort as well. Kapali and Saleh putting up another partnership. It's just that the spark went away from Bangladesh the moment Rajan Saleh got out. There's too much pressure on the young player. You can't expect miracles from him. He's just started his international career and he's looked the part. Someone needs to support him out there. Well, ball, it's been a magnificent effort from Shweb Malik. How well is bold? Three for 24. And came at a stage when Bangladesh were uh, looking for runs. So he was under pressure. A couple of no balls uh, didn't damage his confidence. He's made them look messy. Well, he's been getting some assistance from the wicket, but he's bowled beautifully. He's got the ball to turn. He's got the ball which has moved away from the bat. And he's been very strict on his line and length. That's the reason he's picked up three wickets. Another one in the offer. Oh, maybe a little bit better effort there from the fielder. Could have had another wicket in the pocket for Bangladesh. But this time he survives. Well, he had to uh, attempt this with uh, aggression in his mind. But the aggression was missing because uh, the last few paces had to be aggressively uh, notched up. A couple of runs, the straighter one was read well. Well, the fielder had to make a quick decision here whether to go for this catch or restrain himself so that the ball doesn't go with a boundary rope ball. 146 for seven this is fighting cricketer but uh uh, what more had another, uh, other ideas did not come off well it's all about partnership that's what I discussed earlier with you uh, Ramiz that uh, once you if you're chasing a target of 244 runs there needs to be somebody who has to hold ends and build a partnership he's been impressive Shabir Ahmed with control and he's got the ball to jag around closer to the stumps 
and then that uh, natural movement away from the bat. He's got a bit of pace and bounce because he's tall. Hits the ball hard. We've seen him to grow in confidence uh, from uh, Karachi. In fact, he had a wonderful Test match debut. Picked up eight wickets in his first Test match. And 17 in the Test series. He's been the real find, I would say, along with Umar Gul in the bowling uh, department for Pakistan. Yes, he's been quite impressive, but he's failed to pick up a wicket. He's won a pretty good line in length. And this one there. That's three on the dot that he has uh, played at it and missed it. Well, uh, Ramiz, I think the both these uh, bowlers, Omar Gul and uh, Shabir Ahmed, uh, making their debuts, would be much more tested against the South Africans than the Bangladesh. South African having the power to dominate uh, the test matches. So it'll be a good testing time for these youngsters. And the positives uh, of, from these uh, series, the one days and the test match, should definitely come out in a better way and a positive way against the uh, South Africans. Yes, this would have been a good confidence booster for some of these young players this series. Slip being uh, employed by Enzimam. He's beaten the bat uh, just on one occasion in this over. That's uh, played in the air away from the fielder. Nicely timed. And that has run away. And that boundary also raises back Bangladesh's 150. 94 more required. Clean hit. Well, they've got more. They need more than one uh, boundary in each over to reach to that over target. Target of 244, but that was beautifully placed. It just a nice soft chip. But he had enough on the bat and the, making sure that feeler inside the circle didn't have any chance on that one. He's got a very aggressive run-up, Shabir Ahmad. is tall and normally you don't associate. Quick run-up with uh, tall, lengthy, fast bowlers. He's got the same uh, build, same structure as uh, Joel Garner or uh, Kirk Lee Ambrose, but they didn't run up to the wicket as aggressively as he does. One fifty two for seven. Ninety two more required. Bangladesh uh, will be hard pushed to get there. They've lost wickets. And so, once again, Pakistan, um, who earlier looked uh, in a bit of problem, now easing their way through. Alok Kapali not out on thirty two now. He has to uh, get to his 50 to get some confidence now. Along with Rajan Saleh, he's the other youngster who's uh, been impressive for Bangladesh. Well, Kupali uh, was struck on his uh, eyebrow during one of the test matches. He got a few stitches there, but he's not shown that he's uh, afraid of going behind the right line of the ball. That's a good shot over the top of the cover. He's really nicely measured that one. Just a nice chip. Again, this time, fetching him two runs. An all important one. It is still there for Bangladesh. As you mentioned, it's a seven runs and over required. So if it, they still have a chance if these two batsmen can put up a decent partnership here. End of Shoaib Malik's stint. Three for 34, 159 for seven. So Alok Kapali would be eyeing uh, that area to go uh, probably over in Zamam's uh, head. And uh, well, will that be taken? Yunus Khan is getting underneath there and he's uh, picked up his first international wicket. 
sigh of relief for uh, Dunezia and sigh of relief for uh, Yunus Khan also. It was a difficult catch. The ball went high in the air here to run back, not easy. He really had to steady himself. Looking for that chip shot maybe to uh, go over mid on. There you see Yunus Khan steadying himself and then uh, catching it. Just managing to hold on to that one. So Junaid Zia picks up his very first one day national wicket in the second uh, one there. Hello, Kapali. Perhaps a missed opportunity here for Bangladesh. Uh, 243 was chaseable, uh, but in the end, falling well short. 169 is all.